While size does matter, it's not necessarily always a measure of aviation power. However, this did not stop gifted engineers who have, for decades now, been designing vehicles of such magnitude that their very ability to leave the ground was already impressive. Today, we are going to take a look at 10 of the largest planes, all with their own unique story. Let's jump right into it. Few people have heard of Roberto Bartini, a Soviet aircraft designer of Italian origin. He was the mind behind 60 aviation projects and also oversight to the little-known Sergei Corleo, who created the very first spaceships. As a result of research, the scientist found that the ideal vehicle is one which is an amphibious vehicle, also capable of taking off vertically, much like a helicopter, or with the help of an air cushion, having the same carrying capacity as large ships, as well as the speed and technical equipment found on board aircraft. One of the designer's masterpieces imprinted into the pages of aviation history was the VVA-14, also referred to as the Amphibious Vertical Takeoff. The number 14 represents the number of engines, two turbojet engines in addition to 12 turbofan engines, which provide the vehicle with its lift. He wanted to create an all-around optimal aircraft, which would be almost invisible to radar, capable of detecting and destroying nuclear submarines, including their primary threat, U.S. submarines armed with Polaris ballistic missiles. Some of the promising developments of the project included the installation of a search-and-strike complex, Polyus, to destroy submarines at a distance of at least 124 miles. There was also the equipping of air-to-surface missiles, weighing anywhere from 6,614 to 8,818 pounds, and extending up to 31 feet in length. The calibers ranged from 700 to 780 millimeters. Also in development was an infrared direction finder and panoramic radar. The maximum takeoff weight of the VVA-14, 52 tons, was not as threatening as that of another experimental Soviet aircraft, one which we will also cover later on in this video. Despite the positive dynamics of the project, two of the three proposed prototypes were built but only one of these iron giants actually saw the blue skies. The idea was thrown out in 1974 following the death of its creator, and the one-of-a-kind VVA-14 went to the Central Air Force Museum located in the village of Menino in the Moscow region. However, it was looted and subsequently damaged due to problems during delivery. Since then, there have been intentions to restore it more than once, but no one ever followed through. The C-130 Hercules is quite literally the most popular military transport aircraft in the world. Nowadays, it is operated by more than 60 countries, and Lockheed Martin has sold over 2,500 of them, in 70 different versions, I might add. The aircraft performs very well in extreme climactic conditions, and the manufacturer still continues to find new uses for its creation. For example, one version is made for sea patrols or commercial operations. The Hercules was conceived as a rugged, versatile aircraft capable of meeting a variety of demands, landing on virtually any surface with 20 tons of cargo on board. The Air Force and Lockheed Martin regularly invest in this aerial platform to improve its flight performance. Over time, the C-130 became not just a transporter of personnel and things with a takeoff weight of almost 70 tons, but also an air tanker, a search and rescue vehicle for the Coast Guard, an infantry support battleship, and even a hurricane watch run by meteorologists. This aircraft is capable of pretty much anything and at the same time actually has one of the lowest accident rates among all US military aircraft. The history of American military aircraft construction shows that there were many promising experimental models and almost all of them, reaching real-world implementation, were sooner or later deployed during hostilities. Only a few, like the B-36 Peacemaker, never took part in real combat, although it possessed one of the most dangerous weapons at the time. On the other hand, it did live fully up to its nickname, the Peacemaker. By the beginning of the Cold War, the B-36 had become the hallmark of the U.S. nuclear forces. 
since it could deliver nuclear bombs to targets located within the territory of the USSR. The military archives also mentioned that the B-36 carried out several reconnaissance missions over the territory of both the USSR and China. Due to its impressive size, the aircraft accommodated not only the T-12 Cloudmaker Super Heavy bombs, but also high-resolution cameras. Additionally, the working altitude of the B-36 made the aircraft an unattainable target for enemy anti-aircraft guns and fighters of that particular time. Its maximum takeoff weight was more than 185 tons, and its bomb load was more than 39 tons, which made the aircraft literally a giant flying projectile. The device was actively used for experiments as well. One of the planes was converted to fly with a working nuclear reactor on board, in order to study the effects of radiation on the crew and control systems. I wonder if they conveniently forgot to inform the staff about what exactly they were carrying on board? The Tupolev Tu-95, also known as the Bear, is a massive turboprop missile bomber. Despite its enormous size, the tips of the Tu-95 propeller blades actually move faster than the speed of sound. In addition, it is the only strategic bomber in the world with a propeller which is still employed on the battlefield. Its maximum takeoff weight slightly exceeds its American counterpart, B-36, sitting at 188 tons versus the latter at 185.97 tons. In total, there are several dozen modifications of the Tu-95. There are also passenger versions as well as aircraft of other classes and purposes. Over the years, engineers have been mulling over various options for the development of the base model, some of which were implemented via the construction of prototypes. However, most of the developments never left the paper. The most formidable bomber of the 20th century, and concurrently one of the world's largest aircraft, is the B-52 Stratofortress. This monster does not show any intention of giving up such a position and status. What's more, this veteran of Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan proudly displays its battle scars and will remain in the US Air Force until 2044. About $12 billion is currently set to be allocated for the further modernization of these planes. Captain Aaron McCabe referred to the Iron Giant, B-52, a symbol of American power, because wherever America goes with him, he will be immediately noticed. He just kicks down the door and then lets the rest of the planes do their thing. This dark bird is able to obscure even the sun flying at subsonic speed and an altitude of approximately 16,400 feet. At the same time, one of the modifications of the Stratofortress, the B-52G, set the overall record for range among combat aircraft. In 1956, the aircraft flew non-stop around the North American continent and across the North Pole, totaling 16,777 miles. Not but a year later, three B-52s circled the world in 45 hours and 19 minutes, flying 24,700 miles at an average speed of 528 miles per hour. Furthermore, the aircraft holds the record for a non-refueling range of 12,532 miles in 22 hours and 9 minutes. The XB-70 Valkyrie is an American supersonic bomber project that originated in the 1950s. With its development, the U.S. Strategic Air Command puzzled the now non-existent North American aviation. Founded in 1928, it existed for over 39 years, after which it merged with Rockwell, and in 1996 was sold to Boeing and subsequently incorporated into the Boeing Integrated Defense Systems Division. At the request of the commands, the bomber was supposed to have a range of 6,835 miles without refueling at cruising speed. The maximum possible speed at maximum altitude when breaking into enemy airspace at a distance of 995 to 1,180 miles, as well as a takeoff ability from conventional airfields. In addition, it was being developed as a candidate to replace the B-52, and the first deliveries of the aircraft were set in 1963. However, the rather ambitious plans for the operation of one of the most gigantic bombers with a maximum takeoff weight of 245.84 tons were not destined to be realized. 
The Valkyrie, with an intended operating speed of Mach 3 and an altitude of 70,000 feet, was supposed to be accompanied by the XF-108 Rapier Supersonic Interceptor, whose mission was, among other things, to defend against attacks by Soviet bombers. Therefore, in order to better economize, a number of systems and engines of both the XB-70 and XF-108 aircraft were the same. To achieve Mach 3 performance, the XB-70 was designed to float on its own shockwave much like a surfer would. During one stop, it absorbed the kinetic energy equivalent to that of suddenly stopping 800 medium-sized cars moving at a speed of about 100 miles per hour. But by virtue of the fact that the future had belonged more to missiles, the Kennedy administration decided to do away with the plans to deploy the B-70. As a result, only two experimental prototypes were built, after which the program was cancelled. The first aircraft made 33 flights and in 1969 was added to the collection of the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. The TU-160 Blackjack supersonic strategic bomber made its maiden flight almost 30 years after its predecessor, the TU-95 missile carrier. However, this did not prevent it from being remembered as one of the heaviest supersonic military aircraft. Boasting a speed of more than Mach 2, the TU-160 had a unique design to it. It possessed variable wing geometry and four Kuznetsov NK-32 afterburner turbofan engines, the most powerful ever installed on a combat aircraft. In its internal compartments, it is capable of carrying 44,000 pounds of free-fall weapons or a rotating launcher for nuclear missiles. Nevertheless, the maximum takeoff weight of the vehicle still exceeds 275 tons. As ironic as it may sound, this giant's only drawback was, frankly speaking, its visibility. While the B-1B Lancer managed to achieve the minimum radar cross-section, the Tu-160 decided to ignore this. And although the Tu-160 became the last strategic bomber of the USSR, the Russian Aerospace Forces still operate modified versions of it to this day. While discussing the VVA-14, we mentioned another experimental aircraft of the USSR. This was none other than the Project 903 Lun Ground Effect rocket ship. This huge ship, or is it a plane, was designed to destroy enemy surface ships of up to 20,000 tons displacement, as well as air cushion boats and hydrofoils. It was also made for countering aviation, to include aviation radio detection and guidance systems AWACS. The ground effect vehicle was created at the Volga Experimental Plant, and it became the only fully built Project 903 ship out of the originally planned eight with a length of 242 feet, an altitude of almost 207 feet, and a maximum takeoff weight of 380 tons, this huge craft has earned its place on the Atlantean list of aviation history. But even the Atlanteans do not live forever. In 2011, Russia abandoned the development of these ground effect vehicles, and the LUN was destined to be scrapped. While being towed in the summer of 2020, the device got stuck near its destination. Due to the team's inability to dislodge the vehicle, it remained on the shore in the surf zone, attracting media and activist attention. Only six months later, in December 2020, they were able to pull it out of the water, nose first so that the tail was about 65 to 100 feet from the sea. But even now, it is still unclear whether or not it will still simply end up at the Park Museum in Durban's Dagestan as a display. Did you ever think that the Microsoft co-founder would create the second largest aircraft in the world? Well, that is exactly what happened. The American aerospace company Stratolaunch Systems, led by Paul Allen, whose main activity is the delivery of goods into space, has partnered with Scaled Composites to create the Stratolaunch, a unique two-body aircraft. Its main feature is not so much the colossal maximum takeoff weight of 590 tons, but rather the fact that it boasts the largest wingspan in existence, exceeding the length of an entire football field, 385 feet. This exceeds the dimensions of another American record holder, the Hughes H4 Hercules, which spans 320.93 feet. 
To create the project in 2012, Stratolaunch Systems acquired two decommissioned Boeing 747-400 aircraft, and the engines and the systems were used to reduce development costs. Stratolaunch is capable of launching atmospheric and suborbital hypersonic vehicles into low Earth orbit. The system consists of a dual fuselage carrier aircraft, the largest in history as well as a multi-stage rocket suspended under the center of the wing between the fuselages, and a built-in system that allows the carrier aircraft to safely transport the rockets. Unfortunately, the launch of a unique aircraft was overshadowed by the death of the company's founder, Paul Allen, in the fall of 2018. Nevertheless, his legacy lives on, and in April of 2021, the second Stratolaunch test flight was carried out. Additionally, the first flights for spacecraft are planned for 2022. And so, we now arrive at the largest aircraft in existence today. AN-225 Mariah, which means dream, is a strategic transport aircraft created by the Kiev Antonov Design Bureau. With a record-setting 640-ton takeoff weight, this one-of-a-kind Titan still holds its place on the world stage even with more modern aircraft. In 2014, the Fédération Aeronautique Internationale FAI, entered the AN-225 into the Guinness Book of World Records for the sheer number of records it broke over 240 to be exact. This, of course, became a unique event in the history of aviation, all within the framework of a single model. The aircraft was designed to transport the reusable Buran spacecraft and components of the Energia rocket system. They could be placed both in the fuselage and directly on the backside of this beast. It is based on an idea similar to the American Boeing 747-SCA, which was designed to transport space shuttles. In 2013, the State Aviation Service of Ukraine published a report on AN-225 resources. According to their data, its service life is approximately 20,000 hours over 45 years and 4,000 takeoff and landing operations. Thus, the aircraft can be used until 2033. And according to the President of Ukraine, another $700 million ought to be allocated for the creation of a second prototype, one which is actually already 70% ready. Can that second dream really come true? Which of these monstrous aircraft impressed you the most? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss another release. See you all in the next video.